Previously on Making Home, I finished the complete bathroom makeover, which included installing light fixtures, painting the tub, and of course, lots and lots of plants. I actually haven't brought this into the space, but as soon as I picked it up, I was like, I regret this purchase. Welcome guys to my series about DIYing and styling and making over and making my new house feel like a home. Hi guys, my name's Kelsey. Welcome back to the Sora Girls and the series Making Home. So you've seen the entire place get renovated. You saw in the last episode that I worked on the bathroom, completed it, it is beautiful, and you haven't already seen that video, make sure that you go and check that out. You can go watch the whole series before you even watch this episode because I think that the payoff is bigger that way. Today we're gonna dive into the kitchen. If you guys don't know, I actually already painted this whole kitchen white and before it used to be yellow slash green. I don't even remember. But there was a wall in the middle and the contractors did take that down to open it up a little bit. And something to note is that I do plan on doing a kitchen renovation in a couple years, it just wasn't in the budget when I was doing this full reno. And I wanted to live with it for a bit to see what I would change in the kitchen before I spend money on a reno. So I won't keep you guys any longer. Subscribe if you haven't already. And let's jump into a before kitchen tour. Welcome to my kitchen. So this is basically the only space in the entire house that I didn't renovate, which means that I have a lot of DIY projects to do to kind of get it up to my standards until I find the day to do a full kitchen reno. Now, when I was house searching, literally every house I looked at, I was like, perfect area for a dining nook. I don't know why, but I'm obsessed with dining nooks. And this one just happened to come with one. I love this little area. This is really the only area to eat in the whole place. So the plan for this area is, I mean, I, this, this came with the space, this table and chairs. I thought at first I might just upcycle the table and get new chairs, but after living with this for a little bit, I've decided that I wanna get a new bigger table. I think that the space could fit an oval table. So my goal is to find one of those and um, I'll tell you what I found soon, but um, it was a journey. Also, you may notice or not until I point it out that there's some water damage on the bench here. Now, um, this happened when I kept all my plants here when I wasn't living here during the reno. Just so you guys know, even though there's no holes in the bottom of your plants, um, or your pots, it can still give water damage because there's like condensation that happens on the bottom of the plant. So I have some water damage spots. Ultimately, I'm okay with that because I'm not loving this color of wood. I like the really light wood tones and like more of the walnut wood tones and this one's kind of somewhere in the middle and it feels very early 2000s to me, which is when this kitchen had its last makeover. So I'm actually going to paint this it's not a color. I'm gonna paint it black. Um, I think it's gonna be a bold statement, but I'm really excited for it. So we're gonna get to that too. Also in the kitchen, this is something I'm not very happy about. It is the most random little island add-on ever. I don't love that it's stainless steel. I don't love the positioning. I feel like it makes it very tight here. So I don't know what I'm gonna do with this, but I can't leave it like this because every time I look at it, I get a little bit sad inside. Speaking of more stainless steel things, I have like these metal handles. I feel like they're the most like basic entry level handle ever. They either need to be painted or I need to get new ones. At first I was planning on getting new ones and then I did a little bit of research on the hole spacing because I really don't want to patch holes and repaint the cabinets. So I just wanted to get new ones, but I can't find any that are the, this whole distance. So I think I'm just gonna use these and repaint them. And we're either gonna go with black or brass because those are my metal colors for the house. It's matte black and brass, just because I didn't want everything to be matte black. Now I already had my contractor switch out my faucet. So I received this one from Delta. It's a tap on, tap off faucet. I absolutely love it. I've actually had a very similar shaped one before, but it was chrome. So I'm excited for this upgrade. I think it's already taken the kitchen to the next level and we're gonna take it just a little bit further. Uh, something else that I wanna tackle is this backsplash. I actually like don't 
hate it. It's, you know, it brings a little bit of interest to the space, but what I do hate is that this is kind of like an olive green and this is like a lime green. I'm not loving how these greens don't feel like they're in the same family. So I'm just gonna paint the backsplash. Oh, that happens sometimes. So we're just gonna paint the black splash and that's gonna be that. Okay, wow, I think we're almost, I, that was the tour. That was the tour of the kitchen. This is my mood board for the space so you guys get a sense of the vibe. I think there's some exciting DIY projects that we can do in here. So why don't we just get started? I think the first thing that we have to do is let's let's start painting this backsplash because it's the biggest, scariest thing, but we're going to do it and it's going to be fine. We're going to smile while we do it. Okay, let's do that. <laughs> wow, I might need to re this later. I know how to re now. I know how to, I know how to caulk. <laughs> so I'm just going to start with brushing on a heavy duty primer with the goal of making sure that I get into the grout and make sure I have an even coverage on that grout. Okay, so while the kitchen backsplash, is that backsplash? I don't know. I think it is. Yeah. While the kitchen backsplash <laughs> dries, I'm going to take you through my little journey of this table. I'm so glad that it came with the house because this is like basically the only furniture I have right now and I sit here a lot. Hold up, future Kelsey here. I'm gonna sum this up for you because I tend to babble a lot when I get excited about design. So basically I found this Ikea mid-century modern tulip table online secondhand and I was convinced as soon as I was driving away with it that it was too big for the space. But I brought it in to show you guys that it was too big and then I was like, wait, do I actually like this? Is this a good size? This just like throws off my whole plan. But ultimately I decided that I want an oval or pill shape to fit the nook a little bit better. And if I were to cut this one into a pill shape, then the base would be a little bit too wide. The base that had raccoon footprints on it, by the way, it was chilling in my garage and I guess so were the raccoons. So option two was getting a marble tabletop for this base. I actually found one on Facebook Marketplace, mocked it up with cardboard, but alas, it felt too small for the big base. So basically we're kind of back to square one. So maybe while I sit with that, let's start priming my bench seat here so it's not this ugly wood anymore. So I'm going to first give it a quick sand to rough it up and make the paint bondable. And then we can go in with our primer coat. So it's the next day and it's time to paint on the chosen color. Since this is a bench that's gonna get a lot of contact, I'm using Benjamin Moore's Advance Line in Pearl in the color Black Tar. Whenever I'm choosing paints, I honestly just go to my local Benjamin Moore supplier and I talk to the experts there because they know what you need for your project because this is what they do, they know the paint. Over the backsplash, I'm using Benjamin Moore's Aura Line in the same color as my wall, which is White Dove. I'm just gonna be doing a satin finish instead since it is a backsplash. And something I'm actually doing here is using this thin foam brush so that it actually doesn't get into the grout. And I'm just doing it lightly on top of, because I want the grout to stay matte because that way I feel like it's gonna look a little bit more realistic and not painted because grout is not usually shiny. Being careful to not have too much paint on my roller and to just keep the grout untouched. I did already go over the grout with a matte version of this wall color, so it's not the primer color, but I think so far this is working. I wasn't even planning to caulk until I was taping and realized how bad it was. Honestly, caulking is so easy and it makes such a big difference. I'm still learning. This was probably too much caulk for this situation here. <laughs> Good news, I was visiting my family in Coburg for the weekend and browsing Facebook Marketplace and I found this, a perfectly sized marble table that just happened to be on my way home to Toronto from Coburg. 
only $80. I think that's a pretty good deal, so. Oh, the search is over for a table. I don't know if I'm gonna keep the cast iron legs, but it's a really good start. Okay guys, I was just out grocery shopping and I was waiting in line, scanning Facebook Marketplace, as I do, like multiple times a day. And an hour ago, a cast iron pedestal base was posted on Facebook. Sounds like a done deal. I asked for measurements and he said, oh sorry, it's on hold. I just swiped in here and I was like, I will offer you $15 more. He was only asking 25. I was like, I'll offer you 40 and pick it up today. And he's like, okay, hold on, I'll get the measurements for you. Am I a horrible person? I don't know. Like I feel kind of guilty, but also like I've been looking all the time and it was only posted an hour ago. I don't know, I'm playing hardball. We'll see if it's even the right size. Okay, the measurements seem like they're gonna work. The base is like a little wide. I think it's the same width as my table, but I'm also just like, it's a heavy marble table. Like you need it to be sturdy. I don't know, it's only 40 bucks. We're gonna go pick it up and um, see how it works in the plate. I wanted a new base because the base it came with wasn't really good for sitting at, the legs were kind of in the way, so the pedestal base is a huge improvement. Oh my god, oh my god. I carried this in all by myself the other day. Okay. Oh, damn. That is sexy. <laughs> Needs to be attached, but we got full 360 motion now, you know? So today I'm heading to the fabric store to get some fabric samples for the bench cushions that I want to make. And my parents are also coming down um, to help me with a couple different things throughout the house. Okay. Oh my God, what are you doing? Is that is guiding, we're learning. Yeah, I'm kind of... I can't see anything. No, they literally, look at, on your side, Mom, you can't see anything at all. That is from the front entrance makeover, which is currently in the works, and you're just gonna have to wait to see how that turned out. But while my parents were down, I asked my dad to help me with the stainless steel countertop that I honestly hate so much. It's such an eyesore. <laughs> so my dad previously mentioned that they're probably bolted from the bottom, and lo and behold, they are. If you look in the cupboards, you can see the bolts that are attached to the top. Now my plan was to take out the dishwasher, but my dad kind of talked me out of that. He said that that would be a messy and long job and might not even work because who knows if the dishwasher can really come that far out. So I said, why don't we just cut it? And he was like, what, cut it? And I was like, yeah, cut it. So we got out the hacksaw, which can cut through metal and he didn't think it would work, but Ultimately, it did, and of course, I learned my do-it-yourself skills from my dad, so as soon as he saw me doing it, he was like, no, I wanna do it, so then he took over. He was just being a dad. I went to the other ones that I could see and just unscrewed the nut, and then we just pulled it off. I'm so glad that this is off. It already looks so much better, and tomorrow, I'm gonna do a whole bunch of things to the kitchen, including figuring out what I'm gonna replace this with. Okay, so my ugly piece of <laughs> can't say that. So the stainless steel countertop is gone. I'm so thankful. This is already so much better. Now, this morning at the office, I cut some pieces of wood. I'm honestly, I don't know. I'm honestly just kind of making this up as I go. Um, obviously, the situation is very specific to me, but I'm gonna be making a replacement top. So I'm attaching two pieces of wood together and screwing those directly into the counter. And then I cut some MDF strips to create a box around and just nail gun these to the inner pieces of wood. And the last step is screwing my wood board to the top and just because I wanna be extra and save everyone's soft sides from bumping into corners, I rounded the edge with a jigsaw and sanded it down and primed it all. So the primer is on my countertop here. Oh my God, everything is a mess. It'll come together eventually. And while this dries, I'm gonna put up the curtain rod and the curtains, which have partially been sewed, but still need to be hemmed at the bottom. So let's get to it, folks. I honestly didn't know if I was gonna do curtains up here, 
but I need to hide something and I'm gonna use the curtain to do it. Hopefully that works out. I honestly don't know if it will. Spoiler alert, it's a light. I'm gonna do like a light. I don't know. Wish me luck. Okay, I got a lot done yesterday. It was a long day, but I'm gonna get even more done today because I brought a friend. Hi. Hi, and my friend brought cushions. This looks so good in here. So yeah, you said you needed to make cushions for that, and then I remember I had, this was actually from a bench in my house, but I now use that bench under my TV. So it's oh, not oh. a bench you sit on anymore. Oh, it's a TV bench now. Yeah, it's a TV bench, so better that this gets reused. Can right? we just like take in that it's like already green? <laughs> and a really nice fabric too, but you don't want this color. Wait, anyway. I've never seen it with a cushion though. This looks so much better. Come sit on it, it's nice. <laughs> it's Becky, your flawed. feet aren't even touching the crowd. <laughs> what is that? I'm like, I'm like really sitting. Okay, that's okay. great. Cool, but well, you have other things to do. Like, I can sew you the new black. Aw, thank you. Yeah, I have painting to do with this tabletop because I only did like the, the edges. I didn't do the top, I only primed. I didn't do the top. There's a light that I'm installing that is currently silver and I want it to be black. And then I've been debating for like months, years it feels like, what I should do with these. I was so ready to paint them gold, and then my mom was like, oh yeah, but what about those? And I was like, <laughs> should I just leave them? Anyways, I just decided that I'm gonna paint them gold, so I'll take these all off today and paint them gold. Yeah, there's a lot of painting to do. You sew, I paint. That's good. <laughs> so something you may not know about me, but I am a sucker for lighting. I mean, I think I need good lighting and in my kitchen, there's only like pot lights and I just don't like pot lights. Like if I don't have to turn on the pot lights, I won't. So I actually wanna do a pendant light over top of the kitchen table. Now, I don't have a hard wire plug-in up there, so we're gonna have to do a little bit of a safe electrical hack. So I have a light here. This is just like an Ikea pendant light. The shade is missing, we'll put that together later. Um, and I have a plug-in cord here. So this is like a standard lamp cord. The plan is to actually, you know, attach this to the ceiling and just wire the plug-in section to it. So what I need to do is drill a hole in the side here. I'm going to put in a rubber grommet to protect the metal and, you know, keep everything safe. And then I would just wire it like I would a normal light. But I'm also gonna paint this whole thing matte black to match all of the other black fixtures that I have. because. Again, no silver in my house, except for the silver I have to put up with on the stove and fridge. I'm also gonna paint the handles. We're doing it all. <laughs> <laughs> oh no, oh no, oh no. Oh my God. Wait, where did it go? Oh wait, ah! Oh God, it's falling, it's falling further. <laughs> oh my God, wow. Wow. <laughs> so to upcycle this light, I'm drilling a hole for the cord and then priming the metal portions as well as the handles while I'm at it. Okay. <gasps> wait, no. wait. What? <laughs> I thought it was the other one. <gasps> wait. It's this one, it's but it ends. Oh! Yeah. <laughs> I was like, why does this not fit anywhere? Oh, that's nice. Oh my god, thank you so much. You're welcome. I'll make one more. I need to like add like like anti slide. Oh, it's not gonna go anywhere. For sure. <laughs> Good work, thanks. Okay, I have to leave. <laughs> thank you. Yeah, that's awesome.
I then screwed the IKEA light right into the ceiling instead of a junction box since that is non-existent. Oh, now I hit wood. Okay. And once the metal portions were painted matte black and dried, I then brought in the pluggable cord, fed it through the hole that I made and made sure to add a rubber grommet to protect the cord from the sharp metal. I reassembled the light and I was uh, just a little bit excited when it was all done. Wow, there wasn't a light there before, now there is! I just realized if I wasn't wearing this midi ring, I maybe would have scratched it so much. Cause I'm like, why is it getting scratched on my fingers? Hey, wow. <gasps> Yo, Ikea, you did good. Actually, I did good by making it black. <laughs> hey Google, turn on kitchen light. Oh, girl. So cozy. I'm so glad I was able to make this happen, like even though there wasn't a pendant here and that wasn't that hard. And all I'm gonna have is this cord that I have to hide. So overall, like 100% worth it. I'm so proud of myself. It's the next day and I'm starting by replacing the silver doorknob with Obvi a matte black set. A small change that's going to make a big difference. And honestly, switching out a doorknob is a lot easier than you think. So in addition to the bench seats that I have here, I of course also want to bring in some chairs. These have been a favorite of ours. We actually may have got the same ones for our office. So that episode will be coming out soon, lot vibes. But anyways, I also got them for my space here. They're real wood, beautiful little like curve here, which works really well with the curve of the table, if I do say so myself. So I'll just have one chair there, one chair here. Now that my big stainless steel thing isn't in the way, it feels a lot more open here. Since I have the canvas here on the bench cushions, I'm not okay with this leathery vinyl on the chair seats. So I have extra fabric, so I'm just going to reupholster the chairs. I don't even know if I need to take off the vinyl. I can just do it right over top. Obviously this is like a nothing change. Like I'm sure nobody except me will notice it, but I just feel like it makes everything feel like a set which I'm super into, so that's the next task. So honestly, reupholstering chairs can be an easy job. In this case, it was because they're really simple. And again, I know that was like a super minor difference, but in my heart, it's all the difference that I need. This is my favorite little place. It's so cute. But to complete this kitchen, we're, we're really close. My little handles are now gold and dry, and I'm actually swapping out the screws. They were put into the cabinets with like regular screws, and I just felt like that looked very like junky. So I actually picked up these brass like slotted bolts it, they're like brass, so they match, and it just looks a little bit more elevated than the screws that were originally there. So I hit up the thrift store to look for some final decor for the kitchen. A white kettle was actually on my list, and I cannot believe I found it. And this turtle lamp was like really cute, but unfortunately I don't have a place for it in my kitchen. And that brings us to today. It's time for the final touches. We're gonna put in some decor in the kitchen, as well as some plants. I framed this blank canvas and painted it the same color as my wall. I'm just using it here as a placeholder. My friend Ariana is actually going to paint me something on this canvas, so it's gonna stay here until I can give it to her to work on. I honestly didn't know what to do above the fridge. It was like an empty hole, so I put some extra storage baskets as well as some miscellaneous kitchen stuff, and I think it looks kind of functionally cute up there. All right, so before I do a final full reveal, I wanna give you a little reminder of what the space looked like before. Before the main four kitchen renos, everything was very green. There was a very randomly placed pocket door. And this is what it looked like after the main floor reno. Um, I already started painting the space white and it was kind of like a blank slate ready for me to work on. But let's take a look at how cozy it is now. I'm really happy with how my kitchen turned out. I didn't want to spend too much time or money here because I do have my mind set on like a larger kitchen reno in the very near future. So making do with what I had, I'm very proud of it. 
The matte black Delta faucet really elevated the kitchen and started the trend of bringing in more black accents and less silver accents. I tried to make the lime green counters work by choosing plants that were more of a brighter green and then also pairing it with a kind of different tone of green to complement the greens. So many greens. The stainless steel counter attachment was taking up so much space, it was a huge eyesore, so I'm really glad I was able to DIY a slimmer profile option. As I mentioned before, I've always wanted a dining nook, but even the one that came with the house was not that cozy. By the time I added some cushions, curtains, like the perfect shaped table, the pendant light, I think it really made the whole corner so cozy, and I honestly feel like I'm eating in a restaurant every time I sit down at this table. A super trendy restaurant, like a cool restaurant. <laughs> And of course the space is never done. I have this huge empty wall in this awkward area in the kitchen and I kind of want to do like a plant growing cabinet there or maybe a bar, I don't know. And I'll see how long I can live with the kitchen cabinets before I try to change them up, even before the kitchen reno because I'm not fully in love with them yet, but I do have lots of other things to work on in this house. So that's a good segue, that wraps up the kitchen makeover. But make sure you guys are subscribed if you're not already because there are so many more spaces in my house to work on. And if you haven't seen the episodes of Making Home up until now, you can see this entire house go through a reno, which I think is just like so satisfying to watch a space, like go through a reno over a very short period of time. Meanwhile, it took months and months. And the last episode, of course, was the bathroom makeover, which I like run into people on the street and I get compliments of it. So I'm like pretty proud about it. So if you haven't seen it, go ahead, check that out, subscribe, and I'll see you in the next video. Thanks for watching guys, bye.